Hi everyone and welcome to this video about troubleshooting problems if you're having issues sending email from Fastface mailboxes and this is for Pop and I Mac mailboxes so Starter, Starter Plus, MailLite and Mail Extra. and in this video I'm going to be using Outlook 2013 just to have a look at the settings the settings are going to be the same for uh, all the mail clients so we can have a look at the settings for that uh, but apart from that uh, I'm using Windows and Outlook to do some troubleshooting so the first thing you need to do if you're having problems sending mail is check that there's not actually an issue on Fastface side that's sort of wider known. So first thing to do if you're having problems sending is just having a check on the Fastface support page. So help.fastface.co.uk and just check out the system status page and we can see today that all systems are okay so sending mail should be fine. The next thing you need to do is rule out any any kind of networking issue between you and Fastos and any kind of settings uh, problems. So the way to do that is to log into your mailbox using the Fastos webmail. So go to login.livemail.co.uk, log into your mailbox and try and send from there. If you can't send an email from webmail, there's definitely a server issue and there's nothing you're going to be able to do uh, about that. You'll just need to contact support. Uh, or check the status page to see what the problem is. If you can send the mail from webmail and there's no wider known issues, then there's some troubleshooting steps we can go through that we'll take a look at now. So let's just go ahead and open Outlook. So the most common thing we come across in support is settings issues. So we're going to have a look through there. So on Outlook, I can just go through and check my account settings. And at the moment, this mailbox is set up and sending fine. So we'll just go into that and have a look at the settings. First thing to note is that if you are doing a test account settings and log into incoming mail server is working and you're getting the green tick but sending test email message is failing, you know then that your password is right. So we can rule out the password issue and the same for testing the password is log into your webmail. If you can log into webmail, you know you've got the right password. So the email address is obviously the mailbox you're trying to set up and here, the, here are the settings we need to look at. So regardless of whether you're using pop or imap to connect you're going to be looking at mail.livemail.co.uk as the incoming mail server or smtp.livemail.co.uk for the outgoing mail server so if we just have a quick let's just delete that and see what mess sort of message we might be getting if uh, if your settings might be slightly wrong for the mail server so here we can see send test the email message cannot find the email server verify the server information so if you're seeing that error message when you're trying to send just check that the outgoing mail server has the right setting in there so that's livemail.co.uk next is username and password but like we say if you can receive you know username and password are going to be correct um, certainly in Outlook if you're using another mail client that asks you to put your credentials in for both then for both incoming and outgoing then you might want to just check that but in Outlook if we go to more settings you'll see in outgoing mail server it says my outgoing server SMTP requires authentication and it's used the same settings as my incoming mail server so the username and password is the same but this setting here is one that could be causing you issues so if we uncheck that and click OK and do test account settings we're getting a an error message here so that is because I've unchecked the box that requires authentication so my um, my version of Outlook isn't sending my username and password across and therefore our mail server is rejecting that so I can see that I can log into the mail server but I can't send the test email message so first thing to check is whether we've got outgoing server requires authentication if that's all set and you've got you're using the same settings as my incoming mail server the next thing to check is the ports and the SSL so you've got to be connected using SSL so make sure the encryption is SSL and not anything else um, and also the port numbers are 993 if you're connecting using IMAP or if you're using POP it's 995 and outgoing mail server is 465 and again SSL needs to be the type of encryption there if you're getting asked for the type of um, in the type of encryption or anything like that um, an option not here sometimes in Mac mail it'll be just username and password rather than any kind of anything you might be seeing things like Kerberos or something like that but it'd be if you've got that option in your mail client you'll be looking for email uh, for username and password that, that's not a thing in Outlook 
if you've got the settings um, set how I've got them here, that should be working. Uh, so if we close that and just test account settings to make sure that's all working again. So there we go, settings are all right and that is working. If your settings are all correct and you're still getting errors, um, the next thing to try is um, potentially looking at your firewalls because um, that's quite a common issue for firewalls blocking a certain port or it could be some kind of issue between your internet service provider and our servers unfortunately if all your settings are correct and it's still not working it gets quite difficult for us to diagnose because there's a lot of things that could be well out of our control so if your firewall is blocking it or there's a problem between your internet service provider and us it's very difficult to diagnose just because it's out of our control but the next thing um, to look at is bounce backs. So if you're sending mails and they seem to be going out but you're getting bounce backs messages, let's have a look at that. So cancel that, close that. So basically I've got some pre uh, pre-done bounces here just so I can show you now there are a lot of reasons you might receive a bounce back so I've got some of the more common ones here so we'll have a look at the sort of bounce back messages you might be seeing so generally see, speaking your bounce backs are going to look a little bit like this let's just pop this out so we can full screen it so this one here is uh, I sent an email to a made up email address at outlook.com so outlook.com definitely exists but the mailbox I made up doesn't exist on Outlook so what we can do is have a look at these bounce backs and they're usually in plain English so we can try and work out what's going on so we can see here the mail system at this address here that says fastest in it so that's the fastest mail server emailing me to advise me my message has bounced back so you can you can read through and it says um, a bit more information and here we can see what the server on the other side responded now this is really important because this bounce back here is telling me that the host mx2.hotmail.com and it's got an IP address responded which means my mail made it all the way to their servers it just wasn't delivered to their mailbox so from there we can just need to work out what the reason for that was and usually uh, there's a bit of a plain English reason for it and here we can see 550 requested action not taken and the actual reason mailbox unavailable so we know there's nothing wrong with the fastest side of things there it's just the mailbox unavailable on the other side so let's close that one down and have a look at another one. So here we have sent an email to mailbox at notarealdomain123.com and luckily it was made up so there wasn't a domain there. And here we can see the reason here, the host or domain not found. So that never made it to any kind of mail server. There's no IP address, no other, ho uh, no other mail server, but host or domain not found, name service error for the name, a host not found. So again, that has that's not a fast host issue there that's just because the mailbox the domain doesn't exist and you can see there the exact reason for that there so let's take a look at another common one so this one here um this is a slightly different one so this is uh, an email sent to hotmail when one of our ips was blocked so what sometimes happens is if some spam's been detected or something like that because we use shared ips sometimes they get blacklisted and that can cause your mails to get bounced but again we can see that in this message here so we've got the same bit uh, the fastest mail server telling me that message is bounced and again host mx3.hotmail.com so we know that's got all the way through to the mail servers because it's got to this host here with the IP address and it said and uh, they weren't delivered unfortunately messages weren't sent and that's our IP address there please contact your internet service provider since part of their network is on our block list so if one of our IPs has been blacklisted that's the sort of message you're going to see contact support and we will be able to advise on that one as well and again this is just another one this is a fairly common one we see which is a slight typo so again I sent out a um, I sent out a mailbox uh, um, email but we can see here that's our mailbox at outlook.com but there's three O's uh, in there it's just a, a slight typo and we can see here uh, the connection timed out um, it did actually get to a mail server that's a domain that does exist but we can see there uh, the connection timed out it means it's connected to the mail server and it's just timed out so the message has been bounced back there's going to be a lot more uh, 
bounce back reasons for that. There literally could be hundreds of them. I'm not going to go for all of them. But generally speaking, if you have a, actually read the email, there's usually a plain a reason in plain English. Um, once you know what you're looking for, if you know what you're looking for, it's easy. But if you've never done it before, it's one of those. I just need to know where to look. If you do get a bounce back, by all means, contact our support team. We can always try and advise on what the problem is if you're not sure yourself. So the other issue uh, that you might run into if you're sending mail and it's not being received by the, any recipients is our mail sending limits. So if we go over to our fast hosts mail, our fast hosts uh, guide on this. So we've got a, a KBA, a knowledge based article in our support site. And one of the reasons for mail not being delivered is here. The email just disappears. Now, there's a couple of reasons this might happen. So firstly, you need to check attachments. So if you're trying to send a 100 megabyte attachment, you're probably going to get an error. But if you don't and it looks like it's sent, it could well be um, you're over you're over the attachment limit. And there's a guide here. And I will link, all, I will link to this in the uh, video guide. But it just tells you what your sending limits are for or, um, the, size of the size of the attachment. Now we do have sending limits in terms of volume as well, and as I said before, some of our emails get uh, some of our IP addresses do get blacklisted from time to time. And to try and prevent things like that from happening, we have mail sending limits to prevent anyone sending spam out from our mail servers. So if you're hitting these mail sending limits here, that will be a reason that you're sending mail and they're not being delivered to your recipients. So again the limits will be in this KBA and if you want to check them I am um, I would still even if you're watching this video I'll just click through and check because at the time of recording this is what they are but they might change and the knowledge base article will always be up to date um this one I uh, check recipients mailboxes I mean ask if you're sent, sent an email to someone and they say they haven't received it check spam uh, it's a fairly so it's a fairly common sense one um but yeah, it happens from time to time I get caught out by it as well I think I haven't received an email and it's in my spam I always forget to check my spam and now hopefully I've covered uh, the reason that you're having problems sending but if you're still having issues sending and you'd like to speak to one of our support team just get in contact uh, we're happy to try and help like say sometimes it's something we might not be able to help with if it's a networking error or an issue on your on your machine or some kind of uh, problem with your firewall it's going to be really difficult for us to help you but we'll always help you and at least we can try and narrow it down to what it might be uh, to help you with your troubleshooting and that's the end of the video thanks very much for watching goodbye for now